So, uh, hi, my name is Bartek. I am a senior software engineer at Allegro. And today I will talk about BigFlow, which is our open source framework for data processing on GCP. I will start from telling you the story behind BigFlow so you can understand why we have created it. And then I will show you a demo where uh, I will try to uh, migrate a Apache Beam process uh, to BigFlow just to show you that that's easy, uh, easy process. And then I will talk shortly uh, about plans for the future. So let's start with the story behind. Uh, BigFlow is a byproduct of three business projects uh, that we have created during the last three years. And uh, we have started with some initial setup for the first project. And the setup uh, involved uh, data flow for data processing, BigQuery for, for storage and processing, and Cloud Composer for the scheduling. And uh, during the next two years, uh, we have improved the, the initial setup and solved many problems using the initial setup. And somewhere in the, in the middle of the, the, the whole three years, we have uh, created a bigger query, which was the ancestor for BigFlow. And uh, about, uh, about six months ago, we encountered a problem that was unsolvable using bigger query. And bigger query back then was uh, the common base for, for our projects. And uh, the, the problem I'm talking about is uh, dependency hell on Cloud Composer. It's, and that's, that's the main problem that uh, BigFlow solves. So now let's talk about Cloud Composer. Uh, Cloud Composer is basically a Airflow hosted on GCP. And it's very easy to use. It's very easy to set up. All you need to do is to fill uh, the form, click the button, and uh, it, it will take you like five minutes. Uh, you get a set of useful metrics out of the box, so you can set up alerting quickly, easily, and you can see what is going on inside your composer. Uh, you get a nicely done logging uh, dashboard, so you can debug stuff easily. Uh, you can manage your Cloud Composer either through the API or UI. And you can do the most uh, important operations using UI. So it's very nice, especially for, for people like data scientists. And uh, when it comes to DAX deployment, it's also very easy because uh, all you need to do is put your DAX into a Google Cloud Storage folder. And you can, of course, do it through the GCS UI or, or API. So those are the, the good things. Now let's talk about bad things. First of all, updating packages, updating Python packages on Cloud Composer takes from 50 to 16, or from, from 15 to 60 minutes. And that's problematic in many ways. First of all, it slows down the development process because when you change your dependencies in the, the code repository, then you need to apply these changes to the composer and it takes a long time. And to make it even worse, uh, it might not succeed. So after 15 to 60 minutes, you get an error and uh, the, the, the common issue, uh, if your dependency list starts to grow, is to get a clash with pre-installed composer dependencies or just your own dependencies if you are not careful. And then you need to go through the tedious uh, process of debugging and uh, it's, it makes even uh, solving that problem even longer. And remember that uh, 
pre-installed versions of uh, Python packages on Cloud Composer might change from version to version. So switching to another version of Cloud Composer is not completely safe operation. And in the worst case scenario, your composer says that everything is fine after the update, but in reality is broken. So you get, for example, 500 on, uh, from, the, from the web server. And that was the, the main reason for, for creating BigFlow. Uh, it was solving that problem, solving problem of dependency hell. And uh, fortunately, there is uh, uh, something we can use to solve that uh, problem on Cloud Composer, and it's called Kubernetes pod operator. Uh, that operator allows you to run your task inside the Docker container. So you can perfectly encapsulate your code. And uh, all you need to do is to pick the, the, the right image you want to use and uh, specify the, the command you want to execute on a Docker container. So uh, it's very powerful, uh, very powerful tool, but uh, it might be inconvenient when it comes to, to switching to that uh, operator, because now you need to dockerize your, your Python project, your data processing project or, or ML project, whatever. Uh, so you need to create a Docker file. Uh, you need some way of uh, executing your tasks inside your container. So it's nice to have, it's nice to have some command line. And of course, you need to rewrite your DAGs so they use only Kubernetes pod operator. Uh, if you want to, of course, encapsulate your, your tasks uh, pay perfectly. And uh, that's where BigFlow comes into play because uh, BigFlow is primarily a build system which allows you to turn your data, uh, data project uh, into a Docker image. So the two main artifacts that uh, BigFlow produces uh, are the Docker image and uh, DAX. DAX, uh, which use uh, only Kubernetes pod operator. And it might sound weird to, to, to hear that we generate DAX, uh, but I will explain and show you how it works uh, during the demo. So the, the, second, uh, the second thing about BigFlow is that it gives you deployment tools. So you can easily put your images into the Google Container Registry. So Cloud Composer can easily reach for these images. And secondly, it allows you to, to easily put your DAGs into the DAX folder. And the next thing is the CLI, which is uh, a tool for, for developer. So you can use it to run your processes, uh, run the whole workflow, to build your project, to deploy your, deploy your project, to release versions, things like that. And also it acts as as connector between DAC and, and processing. So uh, as you can see here, the, the example is using BigFlow CLI to actually execute the, the task. The next thing is scaffolding tool. So it allows you to quickly start a fresh BigFlow project. You also get a tooling for Apache Beam, BigQuery and PySpark. And uh, we focus on supporting Apache Beam and BigQuery because we use them heavily in our BigFlow projects inside the company. And there is uh, experimental PySpark support. And we currently, uh, we are not focusing on, on PySpark because we have a separate project inside the company uh, for, for support uh, that, that supports uh, 
PySpark and, and data, data proc. And uh, you get also an automatic uh, versioning tool. So you don't need to explicitly version your artifacts, so images and docs. You get the configuration tool, which allows you to easily define as many environments as you want. So for example, if you want development environment and, and prod environment, then, then you can do it. And also you get the end-to-end -end testing support. So for example, if you are using, for example, BigQuery, which cannot be emulated on your local machine, then uh, the, the BigFlow end-to-end testing support may be helpful to, to write a test for such a system. And now uh, it's all when it comes to, to BigFlow features. And let's go to the example problem I will try to solve during the demo. So let's say that we have a Apache Beam processing written in, in Python SDK. And we have a Cloud Composer. And we want to use uh, BigFlow to dockerize the, the processing and automatically build the image and uh, deploy artifacts to the Cloud Composer. So finally, like, just schedule, schedule that processing. So now let's go to the demo part. OK, so now let's start the demo part. Uh, first of all, I need a fresh BigFlow project. And to do that, first I need to install BigFlow. So uh, I need some uh, virtual environment. So Python and let's call it Big Data Summit Warsaw Nth. Okay, now I can use the environment. And now I can install BigFlow. As you can see, BigFlow is just a standard Python package. You can install it through pip. Okay, so it's ready. And now I can use the BigFlow CLI to generate a fresh project. So I type BigFlow start project. First of all, I need to provide some name for my project. So I will call it Big Data Summit or Warsaw Summit. Okay. Then I need to choose one of my uh, GCP projects. I choose the first one. And I need to provide a bucket uh, for my Cloud Composer. I have already prepared a Cloud Composer and I can easily find the DAX folder so I can copy paste the bucket ID. And uh, that's all for the initial configuration. Now BigFlow is generating a fresh project. Uh, it might take a few seconds, but it should be over very soon. Okay, so it's ready. And just to show you what is going on clearly, I will open the project using uh, PyCharm. Okay, so that is a fresh BigFlow project. 
And first thing I want to do just to make things easier for myself is I want to pick the right interpreter. And I will use the same interpreter I have used for code generation. Okay, so it's ready. So now, first thing I... So now I will get rid of unnecessary stuff in the requirements file because the only thing I need is, is data flow. So now I will rebuild the, the requirements. So I can reinstall only the necessary stuff. And uh, you might be thinking, why are we using something called uh, requirements in? So using requirements in, you are describing a very generic requirements for the project and uh, you can then compile that file into the final requirements uh, dot text uh, so you have a completely frozen dependency tree of your requirements just to make the whole build system a bit more secure okay so my requirements are ready to be installed. So I run uh, pip install. And it's all when it comes to requirements. Now I will get rid of unnecessary stuff from the generated project. So I have completely clear project. And now I will move the example Apache Beam processing into the, into the project. So now I need to find the file with, with the processing. Okay, so that is my processing. It's a standard Apache Beam uh, processing written in, in Python SDK. As you can see, there is nothing else here in, in imports. So I save that as processing module. The name doesn't really matter. And now I need to uh, describe the, the processing so BigFlow can generate Automatically, automatically DAX for me. So I'm going to use BigFlow DSL. Let's create another module called Workflow. And now I need to import BigFlow and I need to create a Workflow. So Workflow is something like a DAG in Airflow. And it is uh, BigFlow DSL, which allows you to define your processing a bit easier than just using Airflow DAG. Also, it takes care of, uh, for example, of versioning of your uh, images inside the Kubernetes spot operator. So let's call it uh, Big Data Summit Warsaw. And uh, let's define it as a list of jobs where job is something like operator. And now I need to write a job. So again, BDSW job. And it's a big flow job. I need to overwrite a single method. Okay, and now I need to import uh, import processing. So the Apache Bing processing. So I can run the processing inside my job. 
and the processing takes a single argument, which is the partition I want to process. And I can reach the, the partition from the execution context that Bigflow provides me. I need a date in a string, as a string. Okay, so I have my job. I also need to assign some ID. Uh, BDSW job. And now I can put the job inside the workload definition. And that's it when it comes to describing the, the processing, the processing graph. Now uh, I need to also change a bit the, the configuration of uh, of the beam job. And here I need to define the setup file and it's like the standard Apache beam Python SDK thing. Uh, Bigflow just makes it a bit easier. So I need to use a function called materialize setup by. So it provides me automatically path for the uh, setup file of the whole project. Okay, so that's all uh, here. Now I need to also provide uh, the, the path for, for the Google Cloud Container Registry. I want to use uh, to deploy my, my artifacts, my Docker images. And uh, now I will use the, the path I have prepared. Okay. And that's, uh, that's all. So now I could actually try to build the, the project, build the, the artifacts. So I just type big flow build. So first of all, uh, big flow is trying to build uh, the Docker image from the Docker file. And uh, it will encapsulate my processing uh, that can be found inside the main package of the, uh, of the project. And uh, I have a minute to talk about uh, the whole project structure. So first of all, uh, every single bit for project is a standard Python package. So that's why there is something called setup.py and it uses a standard setup uh, tools for, for Python under the hood. Uh, next, there is something called py project tom, which defines the requirements for the build system. It's especially useful, for example, on, on a system like Bamboo. And uh, there is the Docker file, which defines your execution environment. You can, of course, change it. So for example, if you want to use another version of Python, then you can, you can do it. And there is the deployment configuration, which points uh, to the Docker registry and DAX bucket um, that you want to, to use. And there is the test package where you can store your automated tests and Bigflow runs them on every build. And uh, there is the resources uh, directory where you can store anything that your process needs, but it's not a code. And there is the main source package where you can store your workflows, your processing, your configuration, etc., etc. So now we are waiting for the uh, build process to, to be finished. It should end soon. Of course, if you have uh, some tests inside the, the test package uh, and they not succeed, 
then the, the process will be will break. But here I don't have any tests, so it it should be fine. Uh, I think we can already see the the artifacts that are being produced. So first of all, it's the, the Docker image, and uh, I will try to refresh that. Yes, yeah, so there is the, the image uh, saved as a tar, and there is a single DAG. As you can see, it's an Airflow DAG using Kubernetes pod operator. So now I can just run BF deploy to deploy these artifacts. So uh, it will actually schedule that, that processing because uh, when I deploy the DAG, when I deploy the, the Docker image, uh, uh, that is basically scheduling my, my workflow. And I will use that time uh, to talk about the future future plans for, uh, for Bigflow. Mm, and we are going to uh, improve Bigflow in the next three to six months in three areas. So first of all, uh, we are trying to automate the process of uh, infrastructure creation because right now uh, to use Bigflow, you need to create uh, a cloud composer, you need to provide a container registry and like uh, every part of infrastructure. And uh, it's, uh, it's a long process compared to the, the starting uh, Bigflow project and it can be automated. So I think it will lower the, the entry level and uh, it's worth it. So the second area is uh, improving documentation or in general education path, uh, just to make it easier to, 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 to the new users and maybe we'll provide some uh, some snippets useful in many different situations. So for example, we already have uh, snippets showing you how to, for example, set up an automated end-to-end -end test or set up monitoring for, for Cloud Composer. And uh, the third area uh, is just developing Bigflow itself. So the, the open source package and uh, Right now, we are aiming more for the, the speed and uh, stability. So for example, we want to improve the, the build process. So it's a bit faster. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, our users uh, use the, the proper packages for the uh, version of Dataflow or Apache Beam uh, they use because uh, having a clash with uh, one of the packages pre-installed on Dataflow workers may be dangerous. So uh, we are more, more focusing on, on stability, security and speed than, than features. And uh, that's it when it comes to, when it comes to development. Mm. Okay, so the deployment process is finished. So now I can show you the, the result. So first of all, uh, the process is running. Uh, as you can see, there is the duck uh, inside the Docker, uh, inside the Dux bucket. And also we can see that the, the process is running on the cluster, here it is. And that's it, so thank you for your attention and have a nice day uh, during the rest of the presentations. Bye-bye.